Okay, so we are a small community this morning. Uh, welcome from Germany. Um, most people in the room I've already met before. Some of them are new to me, so welcome to everyone. Um, I was a bit scared yesterday when I watched the recording of Julian's session, uh, who did the presentation on Moodle and Mahara Mahoodle. And, um, well, it's uh, at the beginning pretty much the same what I had prepared. So I try to make the, the, the content a little bit different and uh, to set the, the, the points a little bit different to Julian's. And I know that um, Christina this morning, it was too early for me to watch, it was five in the morning, uh, has done her presentation on the features. So um, I would just like to ask uh, the participants to raise their hand if they have watched, who has watched uh, Julian's presentation on Mahara. Raise your hands, please, and give me a give me a sign. Bill, you have? Michelle? Oh, Carol, nice to meet you. Almost in person. We've kn we know each other from Facebook. And John, welcome. Stefan? Okay, Stefanie. So there are three people who have watched um, Julian's presentation, who has watched Christina's presentation this morning. I think you have to take your hands down and, uh, okay, same people, okay. So, um, Carol, I think Carol is doing a presentation too on, uh, no, it's Alison Miller who's doing a presentation also on Mahara, another session, uh, right after Mary Cooch's keynote this morning, okay. So what I would like to show you to give you an idea where I'm from and then I'm going to introduce myself is I show you um, the webcam of beautiful Heidelberg. I think most of you would know Heidelberg. Who knows Heidelberg? No one, just Michelle. Michelle, you know Heidelberg. Uh huh. No, it's not in the in the Black Forest. It's uh, the most uh, famous or the oldest university town in um, Germany. It's uh, southern Germany. It's uh, near to Mannheim. Mannheim, southern south of Frankfurt. Beautiful town. So if you ever come to Germany, you guys, you have to see uh, Heidelberg. It's a great place. So, this was just to welcome you. Um, something about me, I've been modeling since, um, I can say I'm a, dick, a Moodle addict since 2005. And in, it was Ulrikus um, married, my um, German colleague, um, and <coughs> when I went and had a, and she had a workshop, I was immediately, I went home and started right away. Um, I have started with Mahara in 2006. Um, that was uh, the so-called MOSEP project, uh, was a teacher training pilot project I did. Um, I put the links on the Moodle course in the iMood, so you can um, have a look at this. Um, I am no more teaching. I used to be a language teacher in a vocational school. Yeah, I really, w I, Carol, I really, I really was a pioneer because in 2006, Mahara was full of bugs and I it drove me almost mad. So I'm really happy with the state of Mahara as it is right now. It's perfect. And uh, I used to be a language teacher in a vocational school. And uh, so I found that the combination of Moodle and Mahara was just perfect. And I immediately went for it. Um, I've reti I'm retired now for in the second year, uh, but I should say I'm only retired from school and not from education, as you can see. Um, I'm still active on uh, Moodle mode in the German Moodle modes. I'm also traveling abroad to do workshops at Mahara, and I'm very happy to have an international network. That's why someone called me Networking Lady, and this is my Twitter name. And. Well, this is, as I told you before, this is the third session on Mahara. Julian and Christina have done two, oh, I, I know it from Julian, I've seen terrific sessions. I know it from Christina because I watched her sessions before other sessions. 
So I hope I can show you still something which you haven't seen before. And as I just pointed out to you, there is one other Mahara session um, after Mary Kuch's keynote. I think that we have four sessions uh, in, uh, this, I'm, in this Moodle mood shows uh, the growing importance of uh, this tool and that it goes well, that, it, that Moodle and Mahara really belong together and as we call it, it has become Mahoodle. Um, yeah, networking lady, but with a, wait, I will just type that in here. It's like that on Twitter. Okay. <clears throat> so, I will switch to the presentation uh, directly. Um, if you have any questions, I have arranged my screen here so that I can see the chat. So, if you want to talk at any given point, just raise your hand and I will give you the microphone. Um, what I'm going to show you today is an introduction to, because we also have people who have not really work with Mahara. I have prepared two um, pods, two polls, and I would like to know your teaching background. So if you would be kind enough just to fill in this um, poll so that we can see where you come from. Okay. I thought I had everything, <laughs> but we have other two. Oh, the admins. I hope they won't be too critical about Mahara. The admins are always most difficult. <laughs> okay, university teacher, two, two teachers, IT admins and others. What are the others doing? Uh, E-learning consultant, yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, I should have thought of that, yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have a whole range. And uh, the second is, um, I have to hide that. And the second poll I have prepared is your experience, uh, your Mahara experience. Okay, so no one really has used it with students. This is really this is really good because then I think I can show you something new. Oh, one person has used it with students, yeah. Ah, okay, broadcast results. Yes, sorry for that. Thank you. Christina, you're great. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good, thank you. So I will close this poll too. I have to hide that. Okay, and I think we can start with the presentation. So I switch to presentation mode. Okay, um, well I have forgot I'm an English teacher so I'm supposed um, to know how to pronounce this one. Um, I did not draw. Here's the pointer. M squared, but this is not squared, it's high three or what? I don't know. Anyway, I call it my presentation Moodle plus Mahara is Mahoodle and I also added mobile. I don't know whether Christina has talked about the mobile upload. Julian hasn't, so that he has left something for me too. Um, the Moodle classroom is really a place for collective learning. And I was really glad when I watched the other sessions on uh, Moodle the other days uh, to see that the focus of this iMood is really now has really now shifted to the student, to the learner, and the learner is in the center, and uh, it's uh, they take great care to see how they can improve the learning for the student and not just playing around with um, with Moodle. So the learner is really in the center and this helps me a lot um, to switch over to Mahara. So 
you can see they are working together in a real classroom here. The Moodle classroom is basically the same, but it is a virtual classroom. This is Moodle, and what where we are going to today is the individual ePortfolio for the single student to show off what he or she has done. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, sessions where um, collaboration, cooperation was shown, and uh, I spotted very often. I spotted the problem. Uh, people had where they wanted to have um, single students um, show off what they could do in one single place. Moodle is great for working together in a group. You have the you have the forums, you have the database, you have the workshops, you have the the, the glossaries, which is a great tool. And we heard a lot about all these tools. But there is no place for the single student. We do have the blog now, but this is not comparable. Uh, but there is no place in, um, in Moodle where you can see the work of one single student all together. I used to be a little bit frustrated, for example, when they uh, loaded up their assignments and I had to to get an overview of what one student was doing, I had to click on all the different assignments and glossaries and whatsoever, wherever this student has left something. So I think um, it's a nice idea to switch to combine um, the Moodle classroom with the individual ePortfolio of a student. So if you have questions, just type them in the chat. I'm really, I've opened the chat and I can see what you are typing. So the question for me is not really about Moodle or Mahara, but who is in control? And um, I don't remember in which uh, session it was. Uh, this was also a big, ah, yeah, it was in Thomas, uh, Thomas Lassage session um, where we discussed this, that still, uh, however democratic and liberal a Moodle course is, it is still the teacher who is in control. And um, the Moodle classroom uh, reflects very much the teacher's style. So if the teaching style is very open, then the Moodle course would also be very open. And um, if we switch to the Moodle, if we switch to the Mahara, then we need the student more in control. So. What Mahara is about is to give the control from the teacher to the student who can decide. And Julian showed this very, very well um, in yesterday in his session, uh, that the student is really the owner of his work. And this is a big problem for the admins. But we can discuss this later. So the shift goes from the, the control goes from the teacher in the Moodle course room to the student in the Mahara ePortfolio. In Moodle, we have the activities that we share information, which is great. We can communicate via messages, via forums, and so on. I don't need to tell you all that. Um, we can cooperate. Students can cooperate in the workshop, for example, and they can cooperate in the wiki, in the glossary, and they can even, last point is, they can even create new things in, um, in a common place where all of them can view their work. So this is really the perfect tool, Moodle is the perfect tool for all these uh, pedagogical or for all these, I would say, learning activities. And um, it's been great to see um, the sessions where um, this use was explained and introduced in many, many famous, very uh, wonderful examples. I will focus. <laughs> okay. So this is the Moodle course room, which is great. And I haven't given up the Moodle course room. I, I still think it is a viral, it's a viral setting. And if you go to the, so we can say that Moodle is really for social learning, where they stay together and work together. They are very busy. Sometimes they are lazy. And uh, if we go to Mahara, Mahara is rather 
a place where a student can collect something. Well, this is a horrible collection, but uh, I think uh, a memorable picture. Um, to collect stuff, um, the second thing is that students can reflect on their learning. Um, reflection is a little bit difficult for our normal students, I found. So if you um, implement, if you introduce Mahara in, your, in a school setting, uh, you'd better not start talking about reflection, but you make, uh, you'd better um, kind of incorporate this reflective part in, in the didactical part, so that students don't really realize that. I will talk about this later. So they reflect about what they've done. Um, they, next step is they present what they did. I think this is Alec Kuros, if I see that right. And uh, the last step would be to publish. The nice thing about Mahara is that it is not the teacher who decides what, when and to whom something is published. It's only the student. We'll come to this point later too. Yeah, Christina, it looks like him. <laughs> okay. But it was under Creative Commons, so I didn't steal it. So this is Mahara, collecting, reflecting, presenting and publishing. If we talk about ePortfolio, there are um, 20 different opinions, 20 different um, uh, yeah, opinions people see, Maha see an ePortfolio and how it can be used, even more than 20. So it's a little bit like um, Moodle, there is not one way of using Moodle um, and there is no one way of using Mahara. You have to adapt it to your needs or to the students' needs. We will look at some examples later. So, Mahara is rather for personal learning and uh, it's for the student to showcase his or her work and her progress and what they've achieved. So, it's for the Riverside Twin Theatre. So for personal learning. So we call this the Mahoodle project. Mahara and Moodle gives Mahoodle, like Sloodle with the second life. Yeah. And here's a slide uh, Julian has used yesterday too. And I've been using this for many, many years and I can't really remember who did it first. So Julian, we have to get this <laughs> clear. I have, no, I have no idea. I'm showing it again. So Moodle is a learning management system and it is owned by the class. It's the course room, it's the virtual close, uh, course room, but the layout is chosen by the teacher. The goals are chosen by the teacher, the content is mostly chosen by the teacher, although it depends how open the course is because you can give um, tutors roles to students too. The feedback normally is given also by the teacher, unless we use the workshop, and the assignment and deadlines are also used by the teachers. The concept of theatre, yeah, <laughs> on one stage, yeah, that's right, Carol, yeah. Yeah, you leave the curtain closed, exactly, Stefan, that's a good image, until you decide when you open your theatre, yeah, great. Okay, so this is the teacher-centered, this is the teacher-centered course room. It's for the whole class. Uh, Mahara, on the other side, is an e-portfolio. Oops, that was too fast. It is owned by the student, even if many admins do not like this idea. But um, Julian has put it clear yesterday. If a student really uploads some content which is not okay, it is easier, easier to control it because everything is locked than if he does something in the classroom. So I don't want to discuss this in depth here because Julian has done this marvelously yesterday. The layout can be chosen by the student. Um, unfortunately, the layout uh, possibilities in Mahara are not yet as good as, for example, in WordPress or Plogger or so, but um, some development has been made here. Uh, the goals are chosen by the student. Well, it also depends on the project. If there's a school project and the teacher says, okay, we're going to do um, e-portfolio on this and that, and so they have agree on some goals. The content to put in uh, is also chosen by the student 
And what is great is the feedback uh, possibility. Feedback is very difficult with our students, also with our teachers, by the way. And they have to get used to give each other feedback. So this is a great way of learning to give feedback to other persons. And then, as uh, Stefan just uh, put it, the student opens the curtain to a chosen audience. And this is really great, because um, if, he, if the student doesn't want a group to see what he's done, then he would not let this group into his theater. So this is the, the two, these are the two sides of Moodle and Mahara. So what is happening here? Something should happen. OK, my yin and yang. OK, um, I think they really belong together very, very closely. It's the perfect combination uh, between um, cooperative and collaborative learning in class and the individual uh, theater where people can show what they have, uh, what they have done. Uh, Carol, the theater concept, um, I think the picture is also, um, I put all the picture links uh, in, the, in, the, in the last slide, I think. So you can use this. And uh, the presentation is on AuthorStream. All the links are in the Moodle course, by the way. So if something is missing, just let me know and I will give you the links. So now let's get to the, uh, to the practice, because uh, the title of my presentation was In Practice, Mahara in Practice. Um, I, my concept was we have a Moodle course room. And my Moodle course rooms, every, each of my class had a Moodle course room for their own. That was their virtual classroom. And it always started with uh, the introduction was always the class picture, so that they really felt at home there. And uh, in this classroom, um, we had a topic, let's say, for example, um, on nutrition. And uh, we did Jamie Oliver's Food Revolution. And the next step was the a campaign of Michelle, Michelle Obama uh, with Let's Move. So uh, the course was not set up from the beginning. I started with just one topic, um, McDonald's getting out of Iceland or something like this. And then I saw the Jamie Oliver's um, um, TED talk. And so the course really developed by the over the school year. And uh, so this is the this is the the task uh, I have set in um, the Moodle course. And uh, I did not want the students to upload um, what they were doing, with, because they always have a choice. They can do different things. They can do, for example, an interview, or they can do a summary, or they can do vocabulary lists in the glossary, or whatsoever. They, can, they really come up with their very own ideas, and it's, it's amazing. So I wanted them to have their ideas um, in Mahara, and um, so that the their Mahara um, page reflected what we were doing in Moodle, but in their very own way. So this was the next step. You see, this that's the topic in Moodle, and the assignment. Well, if you can call it an assignment, they were asked to put this up in their Mahara page. So, um, it is always good if you do such a project with a group that you are the one who gives an example. So, don't start, don't start a Mahara project with a class and don't have your own ePortfolio. So, this is um, my Mahara page where I accompanied this project. Well, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's in German, but... Uh, you will see it from the pictures and from the topics, and, and you will understand. Um, I put all these, this is a whole collection, as you can see here. And this collection is public, and you have the links also in the Moodle course room. And I give you the links here in the presentation as well. Then, um, this is an intermediate thing. Thing uh, Julian also pointed it out yesterday. We have now the possibility, I think in the last two versions it came up, um, to have a group page. 
So, for example, if you have group work in Moodle and you don't want and you want to have a um, kind of home page coming out as outcome of this group work, you can ask the group to create one single page where they can all work together. And this is really a great possibility. The only problem is don't make the group too big because they all have editing rights then, so they might make a mess. If you have students where you are where you're afraid they might make a mess, just give them maybe a template or ask one to create the template and already put the names and place the places for the group members where they can where they can post stuff. So this is um, kind of intermediate between the Moodle uh, classroom, the Moodle course room, and the individual ePortfolio, the group page. What is great about uh, Moodle, um, about Mahara, is that the student can do the selection. It's not pre-selected by the teacher, but the student can choose where whether he wants to put in audio or video or a file or whatsoever. All these things that you can put into Mahara are called artifacts. This is a has been um, been agreed on from the start. Artifacts, and we left this in all languages, I think. Um, what I compare Mahara with is a kind of fridge. So the student, um, they collect, they do the shopping, and they fill their fridge. The fridge is closed and it is invisible for all other users in Mahara. And only when the students take out stuff and put it on the table and they cook a meal and put the cooked meal on the table in a page, then if they invite people and open the door, then they can see it. So let's see how this works. And here we have a student page in Mahara. Um, we discussed this with the, I discussed this with my class before we started this experiment. And um, we decided that we would create a so-called learning diary English. So this is basically, this is not really in the, in the proper sense an e-portfolio, but this is basically um, their, um, their homework. That's where they put stuff um, where they get assignments from um, Moodle uh, in their own way. So I, what I picked here as a screencast is not really matching now the Jamie Oliver thing. So you can see that uh, this, uh, this student has chosen to put in the profile information. Uh, later uh, in my session, uh, I finished my presentation in a second, and then we will go to the examples and you will see them live. I will do screen, um, a screen sharing for you. So he put in profile information, he put in a video, and, and so on. So what are, how are we working with an e-portfolio? Uh, first step, uh, we need to know what we want and where you want to go and what is the context. The next step is uh, to collect our material, to sort out, to combine artifacts uh, that match our goals. And we really have to talk, to talk about this with students because otherwise they just start right away and uh, it's quite uncontrolled. So you really have to scaffold them and help them with that. The reflecting and controlling learning, reflecting and controlling the learning process. Um, this is the most, for me, this is the most, um, let me just get the pointer. Ah, oh, here's my pointer. Uh, for me, this is the most difficult part uh, for younger students in uh, Mahara. Um, because they are not used to reflect on their learning process. Um, I will leave this for the moment. I will show you later in, the, in, a, in an example, in a live example on the practical, on their internship, how this reflecting can be done. Uh, the next step is to present and share their ePortfolio artifacts. Um, this presenting and sharing can be, uh, can be done with one person, with a group, um, with all the people on the Mahara platform or uh, with the whole world because they have the possibility to make their views public. Uh, the next step is to assess and evaluate 
the learning process and the competences. Uh, this used to be, this always used to be the teacher's part, but with Mahara we now have the possibility um, to integrate also the students. So we can ask the students to give feedback, to give qualified feedback. This is also very, very important in learning uh, that they learn that they have to give, first of all, positive feedback and then uh, to say, well, to help people see where they can improve something. So this is also a part which is very difficult for the students and the teachers, the teacher has to give good examples. And then it restarts this ePortfolio spiral. This, by the way, has been set up by Wolf Hilsensauer from um, Salzburg Research. Um, they were um, doing the MOSEP project. Uh, by the way, we have a home page. Uh, it's called www.mosep.org. Uh, that was a European project. And if you go to the site, you find all the material. Uh, they have created tons of material. And during my um, e-portfolio pilot project workshop, I had to go through all these material and to set up a scenario, which was <laughs> really very, very difficult, as I'm a practical person. Okay, this was the e-portfolio spiral. Now, the scenario, my scenario is always define the goal, the purpose of the e-portfolio. Is it a portfolio, for example, where you want to um, apply for a job? Or is it a portfolio where you want to um, show off uh, what you have learned in school or whatsoever? There are so, so many. Uh, I, um, I would like to um, point you to, um, oh my god, now I forgot the name. What is the queen of the of e-portfolio? Uh, who can help me? I will come back to that later. Um, I forgot her name. Helen Barrett. Thank you, Carol. Yes, sure. Helen Barrett. She's really done uh, pilot work in uh, e-portfolio context. So get the technology and media ready. Uh, create journals. Now, um, the, the, the words or the expressions have changed. The names have changed. Before, the journal was called a blog. A blog is a kind of... Um, it's like in WordPress or in Blogger, you start, you make, for example, daily entries, but this is only an artifact. It's like an exercise book. You keep it in your fridge. And only if you take out the journal or single pages of a journal and put it into the page, which is the laid out table, then you can see that. I will show this also in an example. So create journals where they can um, do daily entries. Then collect other artifacts like podcasts, like uh, videos, like pictures, all you can uh, collect digitally. And then you can compose a page, which means you can lay your table and choose what you take out of your fridge and put on the table for people to see and to consume. Yeah, Stefan, I like cooking. <laughs> you should see my, my Moodle course I set up for um, Moodle uh, cooking with Moodle. <laughs> yeah, she is the global grandmother. That's right, Carol. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, then you release the page. Yeah. What is also nice from your guests when you've cooked a nice meal is to get some feedback. I'm always very frustrated if I don't get feedback. Then uh, you can hand in the page for assessment. For example, um, if you have to. Um, get marks for this, then at a certain point your teacher would ask you to hand that in and you cannot edit it anymore. And the teacher assess, does the assessment of the page. And as Julian showed it yesterday, this can also get, um, it's closely connected with uh, the Moodle uh, system, so um, the student sees the assessment also in Moodle. I think it, this is done, Julian, in 2-3, uh, if I understood that right. I'm not going to talk about this now because this is unsafe, unsafe ground for me. Yeah. Okay, this is my scenario and it's quite easy. Um, now I would like to show you some student pages, how they have um, worked with Mahara. Um, maybe I will just give you, make a short break for questions because now I've ended my presentations and I will go to the live 
um, demonstration of uh, what my students have done. Are there any questions so far? Great to have so many experts here in the room. Well, the students, they really, they really like this because I will tell you now how I introduced that. I will just show you an example, Carol. And uh, because I was, um, it is always very, very difficult to introduce something to students and they think that they have extra work. So you need to make clear to them that it is other work. It's not extra work. So I will just open, let me see. Okay. I will show my, share my desktop. Layout. Add pot. Share. Just give me share. Share screen. Okay. Here we go. Um, okay, here we have Mahara. Okay, this is um, my Mahara, and I can I look directly now for this one student. Sorry, okay, I have to look logged in. Okay, now here I can see um, I found the contact. So this is the social component. <coughs> this is Sunny. Um, this student is um, was born in Thailand, so his neither his English nor his Germans were very good, and uh, these students they had to do a practical training um, twice two weeks uh, four weeks or so in uh, in a company of their choice. So they had to write a report, a daily report on what they were doing, and until then. Uh, this task had to be done in Word. Um, these students were in a vocational school and they were studying media design. So you can imagine that they were not very enthusiastic of uh, writing a Word document and integrating pictures and all that. So what I, show, what I showed them was how they can do this with Mahara. So it was a hard struggle with all the other teachers who were responsible for this practical training. But I finally, I made it and I was allowed to do this. So um, here you can see um, the views that this student has done. And I'm just looking for the Betriebspraktikum. OK, that's the practical training. So. What I will do now is I make this a little bit bigger. Okay, I can still see the chat now. Can you see the can you see the um, the website? Yes. Okay. So um, here you can already see a, an example of a layout of such a Mahara page. Uh, you have the title. Then you can choose whether you want to have one, two, three. You, now you can even have more than three columns. I advise them to use two columns so that you have a large column for the text, you see, and a smaller column for all the other ingredients. So the teacher responsible for the practical training had given them a number of uh, pre-defined uh, um, questions. For example, they had to write about the company here. That's where they write about the company. And they had to reflect on the practical training. You see, we didn't ask them to reflect on Mahara and on their learning or whatsoever, but to reflect on something practical, how they had liked the training and so on. So this for them was something um, natural. Because if I've done a practical training, then I think about what I liked and what I didn't like. So this is the place where I introduced a little bit the reflection. And then we have the Praktikumsbericht. You see, can you see the different uh, colors? Here you have blue. And here you have green. And you can see that each single entry has a date 
it has a time stamp. So this one here, this one here is the practical training blog. That's the blog. And the blog is just one other artifact among pictures and sound and whatsoever and files that can be integrated here into this uh, page, into this view, as it was called. Uh, sorry, I just didn't see that. Oh, now I made... Uh, where did I put that now? Share my screen. Okay, here we have it. I just wanted to read the question in the chat and then I switched it off. Let me see. It was a question. Yes, these journal entries are added as individual journal postings. That is right. Why does this always go away? Share my screen. Okay, here we go. So, um, the teacher can see exactly when something has been posted. And this student um, has done it in a very special way. Um, he hasn't written a lot of, a lot of text here. For example, uh, you can see here his 20th day, it's all in German, but I think you will understand. Nevertheless, half of you are German. And this is his 20th day, so the, um, um, it's sorted so that always the latest entry is on top. It's exactly like in WordPress or Blogger. And uh, what this student has done, he hasn't written a lot of text, but he has integrated, he has integrated um, documentation. Where is that? A documentation. I need to go to the last page to see that. The last page, which would be the first page in his journal then. Okay. Yeah. Now we leave, you might notice that we now leave Mahara and we go to a website called Jimdo. And on Jimdo, Sonny has put all the screenshots of each single day. Each single day. So if we pick one day, ah, that's nice, the one with the frogs, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can go through, can you see this? Uh, does this work correctly with the transmission? Can you just give me okay in the chat because I can just see one line of chat okay I trust of course okay thank you um, so I think this is very this is a very good idea to visualize um, his work and I prefer this to describing in a long text I will show you another example now in a long text what he's been doing so this was um, Sunny I will go to another one then. So. Uh, no, I messed up something. Sorry, I have to restart. Let me see. Stop sharing. I go back to my presentation. No, oh, I messed up something. Presentation. Sorry for that. Okay, here we are. We are back to the presentation. So this was Sunny's internship. 
Then the next example um, is a student. Um, his name is Etienne, and he has done something very, very different. So I need to share that. Hot share, share screen. Here we go. So this is another student. Um, he also has two columns. Um, this is also the text. These are the text fields at the beginning. They always remain at the same place. You can see it with a blue um, header. And here's, here we can see his reports on the practical training. So you can see on one single day how much text Etienne has written. Well, other students, they have, uh, other students have solved the problem by putting in a lot of links and linking to external sites. So all this you can do in Mahara. So I think that Mahara is a great tool for um, individualizing um, what students, how students can show what they have learned and what they are doing. And Sonny, for example, has come up by himself with this idea of outsourcing, kind of outsourcing everything to um, uh, Jimdo. Others have, for example, outsourced their pictures into Flickr and then have integrated a Flickr album into their uh, e-portfolios. Okay. So these are these are examples of the practical training. Um, uh, Carol asked earlier how students like Mahara. Before they did the practical training, um, I had to give them some training in Mahara. And this training I combined with their hobbies. So I let them uh, choose to make a Mahara page on their hobby. I would like to show you one example of that. Let me just look for... Okay. Okay, I look for um, Denise. That was Denise. Okay, here is Denise. And she has done a, her car. Okay, she has bought an old car. And she has made a description about the refurbishing of this car. And she really likes, loves her car. And has described step by step. Can you see that? Just give me an OK, please. Well, it's very difficult. Of course, it can't. Can <laughs> Stefan, I don't understand this. Ah, OK, I'm in the wrong. Yes, OK, thank you. So, um, she has chosen three columns, and as you can see, there is no block in there. It's one single, I call this a flat page, because it's all, it's all text fields, which is okay for me. It's another, kind, it's another way of, making, uh, of creating a website. Um, I will credit a bit that she hasn't done a video, but please consider that these students, I have them only three hours a week for three lessons and I had to teach English and I had to teach IT. So we made this um, as a normal part of our of our lesson and not this was not something extra. And I would have loved, I really would have loved to have other teachers work together with me and that students could use Mahara also in other topics. Uh, this was very, very difficult. So if you start doing something with Mahara, make sure that you get other teachers who work, collaborate with you. They don't even need to master Mahara. What they need to do is to be able to give feedback to students and to tell students uh, what they made well and what they should improve and so on. This is really, really important. So this is a, this was her very first, her very first um, view on her car. Um, 
the time is running. I'm running short of time as always. There are lots, tons of other things I would have loved to show you. Are there any questions which I haven't, which I could answer, answer here at this point? Christina, you have the right to talk. You know that. <laughs> so if you have questions to Christina, you can also ask Christina. Your questions, please. Or should I, would you like to see other examples? <laughs> Show thing here. Yeah. Thanks, Christina. More examples. Okay, then I will show you an example. Have you encountered it? Was too fast. More examples. Okay, Julian, you'll get more examples. Um, okay, I will show you now one of the learning diaries. Um, Felix was that. I look for Felix. You see, the nice thing is you can look for first or second names, so this is quite easy. There are two Felixes. Felix. Um, and here is the learning. Uh, by the way, here you can see in the profile of the users, you can see uh, the social function of Mahara and you can see Felix friends too. Um, Siki, sorry to butt in, but we can't see your um, screen sharing pod anymore. Ah, oh, we lost that again. Okay, just a second pod. Thank you. Um, share. Why is this always lost? Share screen. Well, it's still here. Should be here. Pod. Share screen. Ah, okay, here it comes. Now, whenever I turn back to my presentation, then the screen sharing is seems to be lost. Okay, here we are. Okay, here you can see the social function. Um, you can see the student and you can see his friends. And you also have this uh, pin board where you can leave a message and you can also decide whether the message should be private. Okay, learning diary. That's what I was talking about initially when I said we are giving, we are doing the assignments and all the material in Moodle and uh, the outcome we can see in uh, Mahara then. Okay, so here we have uh, what I showed you in Moodle, the Jamie Oliver topic. And that's the way this student, don't look at his English because, um, well, I had to, this is also very difficult. You have to convince other teachers that they cannot correct the mistakes. You have to find a different way of coping with mistakes. For example, you can do this collaboratively uh, by, for example, um, if you talk about this topic, just uh, let this student um, show to the other to the class what he has written about it, and then uh, the class can um, together they can spot, for example, for mistakes. This is also a nice exercise. Um, so he wrote about uh, Jamie Oliver's TED talk and uh, then we have so many other things, for example, McDonald's. This is not very orderly, I must say, but you can say that he has handed in uh, or he has written his blog post at a certain date. So, for example, if one of your colleagues says, well, but uh, if they have a Mahara, I cannot see whether they have done their homework. If they upload it into Moodle, I can see immediately who has uploaded it and who hasn't. Um, it is not a problem if they upload it in Moodle and at the same time they have it in Mahara. So they have to write it double, which is also very good. But you can see the big advantage for me is that for a specific student, I can see with one glimpse what this student has been up to by just opening his view. Okay. Then here are some text fields. Then he has inter integrated uh, videos we talked about. We talked about global warming. Well, they introduced the iPhone. Then we talked about cell phones, whether they should be banned from school. And some students, we maybe also made mind maps, so you can do put in links on external on external tools. 
So basically, you can integrate anything uh, digital, and you can also integrate everything which has got an embed code. This has very much improved now with the latest version. Before you could also, before you could only integrate YouTube videos and uh, Vimeo, I think, and some others. Now you can integrate also Prezi and uh, uh, SlideShare and things like that. So this is really great. Uh, about copyright, yeah, that's a good question. I will show you. I will show you how this works because if you upload, I will go to my portfolio. If you upload, um, okay, resources. No, I have to go to resources. I go to files. Sorry, this is in German. So I'm in the file section here, and here there, ha there I have to tick that I am the owner or I have the rights to upload this specific file. So if they do not tick this, they cannot upload a file. And uh, so the responsibility goes from the teacher because I cannot be responsible for the content of the student in Mahara. Uh, before they start with Mahara, they also have to sign the conditions. We give them conditions that they have to respect the rules and so on. Um, and then the second thing is when they upload something, they have to um, they have to confirm that they have the copyrights on this uh, file or picture or whatsoever they upload. Here you can see the fridge, the content of my fridge. It's quite orderly, you see. Okay. What I also show them is that they do not necessarily have to upload a picture. If they use Creative Commons pictures, they might as well put in. It's the same procedure. It's you always have the you have the same editor as in Moodle, and you can use the same procedure to um, put a link to the picture. So you don't have to upload a picture you found in the internet, uh, which is under Creative Commons. So. Any other questions regarding um, copyright or so, or other problems? Because I'm really running short of time. I never make it in time, I'm so sorry. Yeah, either, uh, Christina, I either put the reference in a text box below, but what I do is I put the link directly on the picture. So that if you click on the picture, you get directly on the page where this picture has been taken from. Image coder. Ah, yeah, okay. Thank you, Stefan. Big tip, yeah. Ah, Julian. <laughs> wow. But Julian, then I would have to present on the Italian spaghetti line, which basically is possible, yeah. So, I, st I just get, go, through the, go through the chat. How can you stop students from cheating? Oh, this is a big topic, and I always get this question, Craig. Um, well, how can you stop students from cheating with their assignments if they do it on paper? You can't, because students have always cheated. But I think the big advantage now with having Mahara is um, that you, it's much easier. For example, if someone just does copy and paste, uh, it's much easier to spot. And then, if you, it also depends on the task you give them. If you let, if you give them a choice of, let's say, five different tasks, yeah, um, then you already have five different groups, and then it's much easier to control. But basically, I think it's a question of having trust, and you have to talk about this with your students. If you have, you have to create an atmosphere of mutual trust that students can trust you. But that also you can trust students not to not to mess not to mess around, and if you catch, it's so easy to catch a student who has really copied, just copied and pasted, and then you make this public, you show it to the class how easy it is to spot, and uh, I think that was it. I never had really, I have, I had less problems since I've been using Moodle and Mahara than all the years before with with cheating. So, any other questions? Ah, Carol, you asked me to present. Yeah, we can talk about this. 
it's not a new issue no not at all yeah so it's time to uh, end this um, presentation which is which has not come to an end but I all the pre all the the views I showed you all the pages I showed you are public at least my collection is public some of my students um, pages are also public and you find the link let me see where I have the link web links okay here are the web links uh, well which is of no use to you because I, <laughs> I gave them names sorry but I will put this I will put this in the course room as soon as this is uh, this is over and if you need more links if you need more material just let me know I put everything into the Moodle course room And thanks for coming for coming to my presentation. And a big, big thank you for Julian and uh, Leonie and all the iMood crew who have been working so hard and haven't had enough sleep. And uh, it's only the second day, and there are another two days to come. Um, I wonder whether I really should um, repeat this session. There is a session repeat planned on Tuesday evening. Um, anyway, this session has been recorded. Um, Julian, maybe we can talk about this, whether you really think it's useful to uh, do a repeat. Hi, Siggy. Julian here. Um, first, before I answer that, and before everybody disappears, obviously you want to give a big thank you uh, from us uh, here at iMood. You know, it, it's people like yourselves you know, giving away time on your weekend uh, to present this that, that make iMood you know, the success that it is. So first of all, a big thank you from us. and. Uh, Every time I, I watch your presentations, so I always leave with you know five new ideas in my head. So it's a, it's been fantastic. Um, in regards to the repeat, um, I'm obviously happy to talk about this offline as well. But the reason we we'd like to do it is that many people are asleep or were out or couldn't make this session because they wanted to catch the other one. Um, we have found so far the repeat sessions have had nearly the same amount of numbers as the original sessions, but different people. So if you are available, I would uh -huh. certainly love to say I'd love it again. But if you aren't available, obviously let us know and, and we'll adjust. Yeah, no, Julian, it's okay for me. I just thought it's no point if there are just people, two people, and yeah, all the others are just uh, re uh, watching the recording. I can redo it again, and I will try maybe to set uh, the accent a little bit different, uh, so that in the recordings we have two different recordings, and the second recording will get the end of the presentation. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. We'll, 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 people have access to both, so I can. People normally find the second one's a little bit more polished than the first, but. Uh, <laughs> no, no pressure on you at all. Um, I never, I never managed to polish my presentations, Julian. <laughs> I've never managed to finish writing my presentation, so you're still a step ahead of me. <laughs> okay. So, okay, thanks everyone, and you're really, I have learned so much in these two days, it's incredible, it's so incredible, and you know what, I think it's even better than having a face-to-face a a -face yeah. mood, because having an eye mood you are really you have you have the time to sit there and to watch other people and you don't uh, you don't go and have a coffee with this and with that with with this one and with that one and uh, and you are not doing your workshop so you have more time to really to enjoy uh, what other people are doing it's been great for me really yeah my email uh, okay And uh, on, tw on uh, uh, Skype, I'm Sigi Jakob. So feel free to contact me. Oh, I got a new microphone. Yeah, <laughs> Graham, thanks. Glad about that. Oh, I was really enjoying that. I would like to stay another hour with you because there are so many things I would like to show you and to talk about uh, with my Mahara experience. <laughs>